Dude, you know what's due tomorrow? What? That AP Physics project. Son of a! All right, so today I'm going to be explaining you how a coil gun works. Okay, um, there are two. It starts off with just two switches. Okay, a uh, nine volt battery. Okay, and capacitor and a coil made out of magnet wire. Okay, and so the way it works. Okay. Uh, is you're going to have your 9 volt battery, okay? You're going to hit the switch one, okay? And it's going to go to the capacitors, okay? And the way it is, the way this is going to, it's going to charge the capacitors up, okay? And then you're going to open the switch back up so when you put down switch two, okay? That um, all, all the energy um, stored in the capacitors will go to the coil, okay? Now the coil is made out of magnet wire, okay? And the difference between magnet wire and radar wire is magnet wire has a lot thinner insulation, which means you can get a lot tighter wraps with it. Okay, which means um, uh, the force on the projectile is going to be a lot greater than if it was with, like, let's say, 22 gauge wire. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right, right here we have our basic design for our coil gun. Right here is the batteries. When our system's on, the current's going to flow from the batteries to the capacitors and begin charging the capacitors. Here's a close up of one of the capacitors. They're um, they're just out of disposable cameras. So once the capacitors are fully charged, you'll see a little light around here. It's going to start flickering. And then you can turn the system on, and the current that flows from the capacitors to here will create a magnetic field, which will shoot this projectile. Okay, right here, this is how you basically fire the projectile. You just put it in this back little area. You push it in all the way with your finger. Now you pull. Right now it's off. Right here you pull it this way and it's going to begin charging the capacitors and we're going to wait for the red light. As you can see you might be able to see it's starting to get brighter and brighter and eventually when it's at its brightest we're going to fire because if we don't fire when it's bright it's going to start to charge in the capacitors. So now we're going to fire it by just flicking to the other side. Hello gentlemen, two ladies and Mr. Lord. Today we're going to be talking about the magnetic field that is acting on our projectile, okay? Now first off, okay, we're going to start with the solenoid equation for magnetic field, K. Okay? That starts out with mu naught, K, which equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 teslas time meter over amperage, K. Okay? That's also times by the number of wraps of the solenoid, K, times the current we are applying into our circuit, K. Okay? Now, Basically, we're going to use this to find our delta flux so we can eventually find our force, okay? So the delta flux is coming from the change in current, which is also changing the B field, okay? That brings us over here to delta flux equals delta B times area, okay? Where delta B is, of course, what I said earlier, okay? And area is the area of the solenoid, okay? Now from that, we'll be able to find the force acting on our projectile. Elvis Tears, how many understood that? Okay, <laughs> so Tyler just explained how the B field causes a force on our object. Okay, so right here I have that written down. Okay, and so what this says is that the flux is going to change as the area changes. Okay, and that is a repercussion of the current operating on the object. Okay. So from that, there's going to be a force acting on the object, okay? And that is going to be described by this fancy equation right here, okay? And we get to that via calculus. So I'm going to use the calc card, okay? <laughs> hey. Uh, and so from this right here, we have the fancy equation, k, okay? And this still is equal to m times a, k. Okay? Uh, that is a repercussion of Newton's second law, k. Okay? And... The force is going to occur over such a short period of time, okay? So it is going to be uh, assumed to be a constant force, okay? And then from that, we can use the kinematic equations, okay, to show that the area is equal to this mess right here, okay? And then from that, we can calculate the velocities and other such things, okay? Okay. Now that Tyler and Tyler got the hard part out of the way, we just have to find the velocity using the kinematic equation of v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a times the displacement, okay? Now we just take the acceleration, k, and plug it in, okay? We get v squared equals v naught plus 2 times 1 half ni and all that jazz, all times displacement. 
the two and a half cancel out, V naught zero since it's just at no velocity, okay? And then we're left with this, okay? All right, so in our experiment, we found out that the force was 0 0.148 newtons. And so we weren't able to find the muzzle velocity because there were some measurements that we were unable to obtain with the instruments that we had. So, but we were able to find the force for a split second when the coil gun was fired. And from that, we were able to do F equals MA and find that the acceleration um, at that one point was 148 meters per second squared. Now, like I said, this was just for a split second and not um, for the whole flight of the projectile. If you can see, I have um, one lead going to the switch and another one. So it's always a good thing to make sure that you have your safety glasses on and that your capacitor is fully discharged before you begin to handle any of this. Tyler, for showing your expertise in physics, we present you with the Willard Vest. Oh. Oh.